Hey guys, welcome to Sunday of Emerald City Comic Con 2014. Woo! Have you guys had a great weekend or what? Yeah? Have you, have you met a lot of people? Friends, stars, everything. It's been amazing. Thank you for joining me. Of course, I'm Claire Kramer. I am your main hall panel host. And uh, who's with me all day today? Anybody? Yeah? All right, we've got a great, great lineup, starting with my first guest, okay? You've heard him in Gargoyles, Mass Effect, and Justice League, just to name a few. But you know him as the first Klingon main character in the Star Trek series. Please welcome Mr. Michael Dorn! Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Here. Yeah, have a seat. Have a seat. How uh, how's your weekend been? Uh, it's been very very nice. Very is, nice. Is I, this your first time in Seattle? No, I, I came up to Seattle. I've been up to Seattle many many times. Okay, good. Many good. many times. Yes. Yes. And um, over the last uh, three or four years. And uh, but uh, so I'm used to it, you know. Have you had a chance to get out and do anything, or have you just been kind of? on lockdown here, uh, like the rest of us, no, by the pretty way. Pretty much, they have, <laughs> they have us like chained to our tables. Right. <laughs> well, that's good for these guys. Everybody, you can line up at the mics. We'll get to as many questions as we can, because I know everyone wants to talk to Michael. I do, too. Um, my first kind of question to kick this off is, the, the Klingon world, there's such a huge culture there, but it's a complete, um, you know, it's fictional. So how do you tackle that as an actor? How do you, how do you learn the culture, the language, and, and kind of immerse yourself into that? Well, initially, uh, well, the first thing you've got to realize is that um, all acting is that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think that uh, George Clooney was actually operating on people in ER, you know? Really? Now that's disturbing to that's, me. That's pretty disturbing. <laughs> you know, or, you know, or they learn, I mean, so it, it's all kind of acting and, and um, but I was a fan of the original show, so I knew, you know, somewhat what Klingons were about. And, uh, but interestingly enough, they, um, uh, when they give you a job like that, um, Gene Roddenberry was just amazing. He said, you know, just make up something. And right. so I said, cool. And so I started to, you know, create this character Wharf character, uh -huh. and from then the writers took off from that, and they just they just went crazy. So initially, the seeds of his personality were completely left oh, yeah. to your. Oh totally. wow! Mm -hmm. And because the thing was that I saw the the other actors, uh -huh. and they were all <coughs> excuse me, I saw the other actors, and they were all like great and and comrades and going out there in space and relationships and laughing and talking, and I right. went cool. I'm not going to do any of that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to do something different, yeah. Do something different, and, uh, and I loved it, you know. Um, and so I, I turned this character into a, a guy who's gruff and surly, and if you ask him to pick up a pencil, he, he might kill you. Right. If you, you know? looked at him the wrong way. If you looked at him the wrong way, you pick yeah. up the pencil and stick it in your neck, you know. Right. I mean, <laughs> you know, and it'll go like, what? Of course. And... Um, and so it became, a, a, they took it off from there, and uh, they just wrote some amazing things. Now, as the series progressed and your character, you know, jumped from one show to the next, did, did Gene, like, keep an open ear to where you wanted storylines to go and the writers on the shows? And Actually, uh, Gene was there the first two years, and the third, third year, he was very sick. And so he wasn't uh, in as much control as, as he was the first two years. But the first two years was, were our formative years. Absolutely. And so, um, but I was very fortunate. They, they wrote some fantastic stuff for me that I never had to go, you know, screaming up to the office and telling them, you know, you got to do this and I want this and I want that. The only thing that, that did concern me was the first year, first two years, uh, whenever a alien or some creature would come on the ship, Worf would get the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> Every time. You know, uh, you know, we'd be in the, the transporter room and Patrick go, hello, I'm Captain Picard, uh, Captain of the Enterprise, this is Counselor Troy, and this is Mr. Worf. Would you like to beat him up? You know? And, <laughs> and, uh, and so, I, and the, the straw that broke the camel's back is that there was a 
an episode called Contagion or something like that, maybe the mm -hmm. first or second year. And this old admiral, he had to be like 80, <laughs> is, is possessed and he beats me up. And you're thinking, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I said, okay, that's enough. <laughs> and so I went up to Gene's office and I said, look, you know, I, I, I love the character, I love the work, blah, 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 but why does Worf always get beat up? And Gene goes, well, we just want to prove that he's the strongest thing on the ship and, and if they can beat him up, then they can beat anybody up. And I said, well, Data is <laughs> the s strongest thing. And he goes, get out of my office, Michael. <laughs> but to his credit, to their credit, they stopped that. They really did. It became, uh, Worf became, you know, I changed his, his sort of like fighting style to, 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 uh, to uh, mimic uh, uh, the samurai mm -hmm. and also put in that kind of samurai spirit into his fighting and into, you know, the martial arts and everything like that. And we, we turned uh, his character into this... Uh, Thing, and, they, and they took off from there. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It was a great deal. Let's, uh, let's go to the audience for our first question over here. <coughs> Welcome back to Seattle. Thank you. Yes. My question is, what are your thoughts and feelings about when they made Worf a father, especially when they brought Alexander back to live on the Enterprise full time, pretty much? Uh, that, was, that was also one of the greatest things that they, they, they did, because I think that... Um, uh, we all kind of expected, you know, Worf to be kind of a, a cool, great father, and he was just horrible. <laughs> he was just terrible. He didn't know what to do, you know, and it kind of played into the whole thing where he depended on Counselor Troy, and then they got very close because of that, and, you know, it just, it just was real to me because, you know, relationships between, you know, kids and parents are, are difficult, you know. I mean, for the, and not bad difficult, but just, you know, growing up and learning and understanding. And, and, uh, and the, but the cool part was when they brought Alexander back on Deep Space. Uh, the first ep, yeah. It was just great. Wonderful actor, too. Great actor. I really loved working with him. But, um, but you know, initially it was really tough. And then they became good friends, which is, which is excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. What was, what was the plan to move you over to Deep Space? I mean, because you eventually became a regular on that show, too. Was that always in the works, or how no, did that evolve? That was, it was the strangest thing. Um, I love the business for this, is that we finished uh, Next Generation in 94. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I was, the, we finished in 94, we did the movie in 94, and then the next year, 05, I was in Baltimore doing a show, uh, I mean, a um, uh, computer game, the voiceover and some, some acting stuff. And I get a call out of the blue. How, do they, how they found me, I don't know, but, but I get a call from the producer, Rick Berman, and he says, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, uh, what do you think about coming back to uh, Deep Space? And I went, huh, okay. And uh, that was, it was sort of like that easy. I tell the joke about, you know, that I didn't want to do it, and I'll never get in makeup again. Forget about that. You know, seven <laughs> years, that's enough, and, and that's it. And I don't care what anybody says. I'm not going to, how much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I can do that, you know. But, uh, but it, was, it was a very, that, that's how it is. I mean, the, the, um, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the negotiations mm -hmm. were very difficult. Yes. They were fun, but they were difficult. And, uh, but eventually it, it worked out, and it was an easy transition. In the, was it easy to fall back into the character? Oh, so easy. Yeah. So easy, yeah. It was, it was After great. After seven years, like you said. Yeah. You know, God. Great. Let's go over here. Hi, Michael. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming to Seattle. I know we all appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, I'd like to talk to you. You uh, already talked a little bit about how you establish a character of Worf uh, mm -hmm. in, in your mind. I'd like to ask you a little bit about the development um, throughout the years. He kind of started off as more of kind of a background character and then as the series went on and into DS9 and into the, the movies, he became much more prevalent in the series. Yeah. Was that something that was kind of planned by the producers or just kind of picked up momentum or was it fan feedback that, that caused that to happen? Uh, it, was, it was a little bit of, it was, it was more, 
uh, out of just just circumstances that happen. Because if you if you remember the first year, Worf was all over the ship. He was driving the ship. He was on on away teams. He was down in engineering. He was just doing everything. You know, he's cleaning toilets. He was a, he was a Renaissance Klingon. I know, <laughs> Mr. Worf, clean my toilet. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, but I'm sorry, I cracked myself up. On that one. <laughs> and so, that uh, yeah, I know. Uh, and um, but when Tasha got killed, they didn't. The thing is, they didn't. Oh, we like that. <laughs> the thing is, they they weren't expecting that. That was something that happened that took them off guard because. Uh, Denise Crosby really wanted to leave. She really did. And she wanted to pursue other things, and, and she felt that it wasn't going to happen. And, you know, and I'm just standing there, you know, like a big goof. And, um, and when that happened, I think they looked around and went, holy sh... Klingon, chief of security? This has got to be interesting, you know? <laughs> and I think that's just how it, how the, how it happened. And then as the character start, they gave him a, a, a line here and a line there that they thought was, you know, just a line, and, and I made it funny. I didn't think it was funny, but they loved it. And then they started uh, writing more and more, because even with seven actors, you can only write so much for one or two people, and you have to explore the other people. And then it became uh, a big thing. In fact, I, I love to say that... Um, when Worf came on, you know, like on a lot of these things, he had his own theme song playing, you know, this kind of Klingon uh, thing that they his had. His intro music. His intro music, yeah. yeah. So, so it was, I think it caught them all by surprise. I think they said, you know, this character is really cool. We can keep writing. It's another uh, thing we can do. And, um, but also I think that they were concerned that I, he was getting very popular. And they, <laughs> and they didn't want to have, like, three people or four people on the show that they couldn't live without, you know. Two people they can live without, three people, and four, no, no, we don't want that. So, so yeah, so that's how it happened. Thank, Thank you. you, great question. Yeah. Let's go over here. Hi, welcome to Seattle. Great to see you, huge fan of the show. Work I'm used to watch it. Um, kind of a two-parter, one's just a quick question. I saw Marina recently. She kind of dominated the panel. Was she bossy on set? <laughs> <laughs> Bossy on in life. Okay, just checking. <coughs> we're we're we're. I think all of us are a bit afraid of her. I can see why. Yeah, she's she's a bit scary at times, and uh, the the thing that I'm concerned about is she's getting worse. <laughs> she's really starting to you know to to scare us all. She and broke her finger in Kansas City, Oops. and you know what she did? She goes, oh, I took it and I put it back in. But, oh boy. <laughs> what are you? You know, are you insane? Didn't stop her, didn't slow her down one bit. And I heard Brent Spiner tell a story. Data was incapacitated on the bridge and Worf had to carry him off. And oh. you were, he was on your shoulder and trying to mess you up. I heard something happened on the way into the turbo lift. I'd like to hear your side of that. <laughs> yes, uh, second season. I think that was second season. I can tell by the uniforms, but second season. And um, they, the, the writers and the producers have this thing where Worf is who they envision. And so they just thought that they could say, okay, Worf picks up Data. Or Worf picks up Captain Picard and carries him. Or Worf, and I'm going, these are grown men that I'm picking up. You know, they're not, they're not characters on a, and so I'm picking up Brent, and he, kept, he keeps going, uh, my stomach, you know, and, <laughs> and starts making noises, and I'm like, man. And so finally, um, as you get into the turbo lift, you have to turn a certain way to, so you both could go in. And I, so one time, he just kept doing it, kept doing it, and so I got in there, and his head's back there, and I just went like that. <laughs> and Oops. banged his head against the, uh, the thing. Did that make it in the episode? Do you know? No, it did not. Oh. No, it did not. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank
Yes. Hi. Um, thank you for coming. I, my question was, I'm a big fan of Deep Space Nine, so how is it like working with the different cast and different captain from Next Generation? Um, <coughs> well, you have to realize that, that um, our cast was, was a bit out of control um, during the, uh, when you said cut, the director said cut, we were all over the place. It's like herding cats. We were running and jumping and laughing and having a great time. And, but when they said action, we were very serious. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't get us to break. Uh, and so, but that was very fun and we all got along very well and very close and the set was loud and the crew loved us and we were just all over the place. It was, it was a wild set. And, um, but good work. I mean, we, we, we didn't waste time. Uh, and then you get over to Deep Space and it was very quiet. Oh, really? And very respectful. <laughs> you know, and, you know, and they said, um, Mr. Brooks, we're ready for you now. <laughs> you know, and, and yes, uh, Michael, could you? And I'm like going, hey, guys, how you doing? And I'm yelling and screaming, you know. And I go, hey, what do, why don't we go over there? And they're like, P.A.S.U. <laughs> Domino. <laughs> don't I honest And I'm like, what, I, what about this? And he, P.A.S.U. <laughs> Domino. <laughs> It was, it was like a church. And um, so it was a little disconcerting because, you know, you, you got to have a good time doing this stuff. You're in the makeup 12 hours, you know, you're working long hours. You got to have a good time at some point. So, but, in, but interestingly enough, the people on Deep Space are still my great friends. I, you know, I love them to death. Um, but we're not we all don't get together like the next generation. The next generation, we're always having lunches or being together. We had a Christmas party every year for 25 years. So, and then even, even after Christmas and during Christmas, we always go see each other in plays or, um, or whatever we're doing. So, uh, so we're very close. So it's two different sets. <coughs> Thank but you. The next generation was, um, was an exception to the rule. Uh, most sets, are like that, where people get together, they, they work together, and then at the end of the show or at the end of the run, they're gone to the four corners of the earth, you know, but, but not us. Every once in a while, you get that special, you know, combination of people that stick together. Yeah, Stick totally. together like glue. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it shows in the material. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's go over here. Uh, thanks again for being here. Um, I just have to let you know that every time I play through Mass Effect 2, um, I feel really bad when I have to kill your character. As you should. Um, my question for you, Michael, is uh, as we've seen the original series cast get revisited and rebooted by Paramount, um, if at some point in the future they decided to go with doing the same thing with the Next Generation cast, um, is there any like kind of current upcoming actor that you could see perhaps taking on the role of war for that you would give the blessing to? No. <laughs> hey, listen. Yes. I mean, that's where the makeup comes into play. You're in makeup. That's where the makeup comes into play. And I'm, I'm in good shape. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, I can you do can that. You can still lift grown men, I'm sure. Yeah, totally. No, no. Um, but I, on that note, I would like everybody to Twitter or whatever you do, I don't know. I mean, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, Stumble, Twitter, Tumble. To say, it takes a couple of seconds. Go on your computer and say, go to Paramount or go to whatever these, and say they'd love to see the Wharf um, spinoff. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and even if you don't want to see it, say it anyway. Because uh, yeah. Because I know where you live. Yeah. On that uh, social media note, kind of playing on that, when did you first realize when you were part of um, the franchise that, that your character in particular was gaining such a huge fan following? Uh, I did really didn't, didn't think that it was... I, I didn't, not for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that um, a, a good friend of mine that I, that I played on this series with, who happens to be Chris Pine's father, oh. uh, Bob Pine, <laughs> 
Yeah, as a dear friend of mine, um, we were playing tennis one day, and, and uh, I was complaining about something. This is after the show was over. I think after the movies were over, too. And he says, Michael, you know, you got to understand something. You know, you, you got to be careful who you complain to because you've created this character. And he goes on to describe the character. And that's when it really hit me. Right. Right at that moment, I said, you know something? That's amazing. You're right. I mean, this is a character, whatever I may think about it or the show or whatever, the character's going to be around forever. You know, and he's an iconic character and people like him. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's when it kind of hit me that it really meant something. Yeah. 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 Let's go over here. Hi. Um, Hi. My question is, my family, we love to come to the conventions, and we've come four or five years, and uh, always excited to see characters from Star Trek. But I've always wanted to ask somebody from Next Generation, at what point did it dawn on you that you were going to be part of the convention um, series? You know, did, was it like a startling awareness that, oh, you know, I'm curious. Um. Do that again? Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I think that, um, <coughs> I, don't, I don't know if it was a, a startling, you know, uh, realization. I think it was just the idea that we said, uh, and, and I, I'm being perfectly honest, when we started doing the conventions, um, it was, this go away for a couple of days and make some extra money. And it was like to working actors who hadn't been working, I mean, not been on series, something like that, you're going, ooh, or <laughs> like you said, oh, you know. <laughs> and, um, but I think the, the seventh season um, was the one that, that got us all, where, you know, we're, we're doing the conventions and the, the original people were still basically running the conventions. I mean, they were still the big ticket items, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we started doing from little tiny rooms to rooms like this size and bigger. And to us, you know, as actors, you're going, oh my God, this thing is huge, you know. But that went on for a while, and we thought that it was kind of going to be over. Subs subside, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's 25 years, and they start doing the 25th anniversary shows. And, and the first one we did was in Calgary, and there was 30,000 people in the, in the Calgary Stampede thing, you know? Right. And you're going, holy... Well, you know what I mean. And, um, <laughs> so the yeah, blank. so it's been two realizations for me that this is... Um, I mean, now it's, it's, it's bizarre because, you know, we're the old guys, <laughs> you know? No, so. no, no. You're not all. No, <laughs> not you. at all. Thank you. There's a store. There's a question from Twitter from at Carissa, and this kind of ties in. What do you have? What or are you what, doing? What are you looking at Twitter there? What is your most? <laughs> of course. <laughs> what is your most memorable fan interaction, if you have one? I mean, I know over the years there's probably lots of special moments, and you can think on that one if you need to. <coughs> well, there really hasn't been a particular fan interaction. I mean, there's, there's, you see millions and millions of fans, and, and, um, but there was one guy that, I, that, I, that was brilliant. I mean, he was really good. Um, it was early on, I think the second or third season, and I was out there, and, and uh, he says, so tell us about what you did in the past and everything. I said, well, you know, um, all my career, you know, I'm glad that Worf came along because he's so different. You know, and, and all my career, all I ever played were, were doctors and lawyers and, and cops. I played so many cops, you know, and, and now this is something different, you know. And the fan says, uh, Mr. Dorn, uh, Worf is head of security, isn't he? <laughs> and you said, uh... And, 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 no, I still didn't get it. <laughs> I went, why, yes, he is, you know. <laughs> And he goes, you're still a cop. And I went, oh, you're right. Oh, oh my God. But they, he, I, he was really smart. Uh, that, was, that was a funny moment. And it, and it really stands out. I liked him. Let's go over here. Hello, Michael. I think um, you are maybe my favorite cast member in all of Star Trek. Maybe. 
Wow. Um, it's a toss-up between DeForest Kelly and you. I, I, oh. I, I think I need, and you're both difficult, quite difficult characters, so. Um, no, well, well let, me, let me break the tie. I'm a fan of DeForest, too, so. Okay. I love him. Uh, All he's right. such a great character. Um, Jim! This last January, um, my girlfriend and I had uh, the good fortune of seeing Brent Spiner perform in Portland. And there was a thrilling moment in the show when you stood up about four chairs ahead of us and asked some pretty good questions. And um, so since then, I've had this nagging curiosity. Like, did you just happen to be in Portland that day? Or um, <laughs> did, you, uh, did, did you have to pay for your ticket? Did Brent pay you? <laughs> Is there any light you can shed on that for or us? Or did you need to carry him anywhere that day? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, um, I just happened to be walking down the street. <laughs> so, I know this guy, you know. No, um, as, I, as I was saying earlier, um, we, are, we are all are very good about supporting the cast members on different things they're doing. Like, you know, Gates has a, has a theater in L.A. and we go support her. And I've seen Brent on Broadway a few times, seen Patrick on Broadway a few times in, in Brooklyn. And uh, Marina I've seen a few times, just traveling. And um, no, I, I was coming up to support him. And I, I really was being, I wanted to be incognito, but he, he said, you know, would you ask some questions? He thought it would be kind of funny to do that. And I said, sure. And, uh, and that's how it happened. But it was, a, it was a, did you enjoy the show? Oh, it was outstanding. Um, he I'm can sing his ass off, can he? Yeah. Uh, are you ever going to join him up there? Like, no. no. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I mean, I can, I'm a rock and roll singer. I'm not. You know, I mean, he's a trained Broadway singer guy, you know. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. <coughs> yes. When you went, did the transition from Next Generation over to Deep Space Nine, you really had the change in storytelling style, where Next Generation had the problem of the week, alien of the week, anomaly of the week, whereas DS9 had the long arcs, like the fallout between the Federation and the Klingons, right when you first started then the lead up to the Dominion War and the war itself. What was kind of the experience with that when you went from this week to week show where the scripts had a loose connection to one where you almost had to go back and look at, when was that mentioned yeah. in an earlier? Uh, it's, not, it's not a difficult transition. I mean, it's like I said, most of, and any, I think any actor that you will talk to about, you know, on a show that has a long arc or even a short arc or whatever the case, it's just basically your day-by-day -day work. You just say the lines and don't bump into the furniture. Um, uh, I, I, I did, one of the things that I, that I did enjoy, and I didn't realize until late, is uh, one guy on YouTube put together, he called it the greatest love story in Star Trek history between Dax and Warp. Oh. And at the time when I was doing it, I said, wow, this is really cool, and I had a good time, and I love Terry. We're, we were friends before the show and after the show. But he put that together, and it's eight pieces of eight minutes or ten minutes or something like that. And I realized how much stuff we had. And that's the interesting thing about those long arcs, is that you forget how involved you know, your, your characters are. I, I, you know, it'd be nice if I had the, the, the foresight to, to re-look at all those shows, I mean, re-look at all those, those scenes, because um, it would really dictate how you act the next time that you're, you know, with the person. But, uh, but that was, you know, that's the one difference, you know. Otherwise, like you said, uh, Next Generation was compartmentalized, so. Thank you. Feel better soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Along those lines, how far in advance would you get a script or know a season's arc for your character? Was it just on as the writers would turn them out, or? Um, the, you wouldn't, um, it, it started out that you had a couple of weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I started in the business many years ago where they, they had scripts for up until six months down the line. Wow. I mean, when you got a script, it was done and you shot it and that was it. And all of a sudden, for some reason in this business, they started doing this thing where you're on the set and the day you're getting new pages and new changes. And each, each time they do a change in the scene or what, they change a different color. 
and it goes through the whole color, then it starts going back to the original color again, you know? And uh, I don't know, it's, it was really tough because you just don't know what you're doing hour by hour sometimes. Right, yeah. right. So that was tough. Yeah, and like you said, it's easier to arc your character if you know where you're going to end up as opposed to... Yeah. <laughs> or learn your lines. Right, you know? right. That, that helps too. That, that would helps be too. nice. Yes. <laughs> yes, let's go over here. In the late 90s, you attended a convention in Vancouver, BC, and you said that people... <laughs> And you said that people kept sending you tons of prune juice. Yeah. And my question is, has that stopped? And who decided prune juice was going to be the warrior's drink? <coughs> Thankfully, excuse me. <coughs> I think I need some prune juice now. Um, thankfully, um, uh, oh, thank you. Thankfully, it stopped um, uh, very soon because it, it, it was, and I don't know who's, thought it was funny, but you know, you know you're in trouble when the writers or producers say something to you like, wouldn't it be cute if? <laughs> and it, you just go, oh no, 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 something is going to be <laughs> silly, is going to be very, and it happens every time, and, and I think they thought it was funny. And I was like, are you guys serious? Oh yeah, Michael, it would be funny, you know, great. And, um, and it was, you know, like, you know, people would give, bring Scotty, you know, or uh, uh, Jimmy Doohan, Scotch. They'd bring me prune juice, you know, and <laughs> bottles and bottles. And the first couple of times, it was funny. Then all of a sudden, they go, oh, Mr. Doran, we have something for you. Yeah, I know, prune juice. <laughs> yes, bring it up. Thank you. Very nice. That's very funny. Ha ha. Get off the stage. Um, <laughs> but it did, It and I hate to throw anything away. I never throw anything away. And so... Um, my mother came over my house, <laughs> and she's nosy, and she opens up the refrigerator, and there's like 10 bottles of prune juice, big bottles. <laughs> and she's like, boy, are you okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mom, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Are you sure? You know, and so, but, um, but you know, it, you know, it, people like it, but, I, I'm just kind of a stick in the mud about it. I, you know, they, it could have been something else, you know, but, okay. but they thought Thank it was you funny. Much. You're welcome. Thank you. Great costume, by the way. Thank you. All right. Yes, let's go over here. Hey, I've got some prune juice for you. <laughs> Not really. Um, <laughs> I grew up on Star Trek, and uh, just this past year, some friends of mine introduced me to Mass Effect and made me sit down and play the whole trilogy. And How long did it take? Weeks. Yeah. Um, I'm actually on my second playthrough now. Um, <laughs> but no, when I heard your character, I immediately recognized it, and none of them knew what I was talking about. But um, the, I, I just wanted to ask, like, the Klingons are like the archetypical like, space villain race, and you kind of helped make them that with Worf. Not the villain parts, but you know what I mean. Um, how much of that did, did you take with... How much of that influenced Mass Effect? Or was it all just the writers? Because to me, it seemed very similar. No, no, it, it was all the writers. The writers did all for both things, Mass Effect and that. Um, I, I, they like the Wharf voice a lot for these things, and it's always <coughs> excuse me, it's always a lot of screaming and a lot of yelling. Uh, so, so I think that's that's. Why they hired me for these uh, for these other things, uh, but um, uh, but you know the original, you know the original stuff. I mean, like I say, I created Worf, but the writers did all the other stuff. I mean, they they created a, a beautiful universe. In fact, Ron Moore, who did produced and wrote Battlestar Galactica, um, was one of the big writers on on our show. In fact, he would grow a beard like yours. Uh, and that's how I knew he was writing a Wharf episode. Because he'd, he'd show up and I'd go, and he'd have a beard, i said, ah, Wharf episode, yeah. And uh, so that was, luckily I didn't have to uh, put too much into that. Thank you. Thank you. Here's another, uh, here's another Twitter question. Um, at Paula says, you've said you think of Wharf as Hamlet. How so? Have you said that? I don't is, think is, Hamlet. Is Aunt Paula correct? I, th I, I thought, uh, no, no, Aunt Paula's not correct. 
Okay. And you can write that not correct. I will. Yeah, I'll Twitter her back. Um, <laughs> no, I think that I think I said that the, sh the Klingons were Shakespearean. Okay, got it. The whole Klingon Empire is is nothing but Shakespeare tragedies and and coups and and backstabbing and assassins and and uh, all this kind of stuff. And that's that's kind of what the uh, the new script that I wrote for the Wharf spinoff is is basically Shakespearean in uh, in its scope. That makes more sense than particularly Hamlet. Yeah, I was particularly, a little, when I yeah. read that I was like, hmm. No. <laughs> I need to ask him that. Yeah, no. Uh, yes, let's go over here. Hi. Um, oh, hi. It's great to see you. Thank you. I'm going to ask something completely different. Um, what's your favorite thing about gargoyles? Nice. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Um, not having to put makeup on, <laughs> and um, not having to to get dressed up in any way. You just go in, you do it, you have some fun, you talk to your friends, and then you you kind of go home. That was the best thing about it. Uh, I got to tell you, I I read for the part of Goliath, and wow. uh, yeah, yeah, it was between me and that son of a. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, I, in fact, I know David Keith. He's very, uh, and um, I think I would have chose him too. No, I would have chose me, but um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that's a favorite. Thank you so much. Yeah, so of course. Sweet. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Mr. Jordan. Uh, first of all, I'm a Star Trek Online player, and I was really thrilled when. You know, here you get to see Worf all the time, and there's a little bit of story interaction. And it's like, well, there's Worf, that's great. And then, you know, I've seen some interviews with you about how you, you know, you, you don't really as much want to play the character in person, but you love doing voiceovers. And I said, this is perfect. So when they announced that, it was like, oh, this is great for the game. It's great for you. It's perfect. So that was wonderful, and I'd just like to thank you for doing thank that. Mm -hmm. um, but my question is actually about, I had heard a little bits of a story about you and Patrick on the set and how you'd finish a take and he would be very lordly in his captain's chair and you'd be above him and so after the take was over you would you would stab him with something whatever was nearby so i just think it would be a wonderful story for the rest of the crowd to hear because i've only heard a little bit of it yeah and yeah <coughs> well one of the things we did was patrick was uh patrick is you know he gets sitting in that chair and he he sits there like a like a king you know and um <laughs> And I'm a big Anglophile. I love English theater, and I love you know the classics and stuff. And so, um, one of the things I'd do is, and Patrick loved it too. I mean, he was he'd sit there, and I go, yeah, and I'd, and I'd start. You know, they say cut. I go, the king sits, <laughs> unaware that death lurks in the form. <laughs> uh, Genius. Um, whatever you know. A bottle capper. <laughs> ah! And um, and I would just go ape. I would just stab him, you know. And and he would go into this whole soliloquy. <laughs> oh, I've been slain by the hellhound of the Baskervilles, and I'm. <laughs> and he would die for twenty minutes. <laughs> just. Just, oh, God, oh, my God, my heart bleeds. My eyes are not what they, you know. <laughs> on and on. Damn your soul, you assassin. <laughs> Does any footage of this exist? No. <laughs> That's no, sad. Thank God. That's a tragedy. <laughs> yeah, that is a tragedy. But, yeah, but um, it, was, it, was, it, it was one of my favorite things. The other favorite thing I did was that I'm always behind everybody, and I talk to the tops of their heads. <laughs> That's what I do, unless they turn around. But most of the time, they Mr. Wharf, and I'm like, yes, Captain, I'm looking. And Patrick's head is, is so inviting. <laughs> it's so, and I would do this thing where I would, uh, and you gotta, you gotta bear with me. Uh, I'd be sitting there, and they'd say cut, and I'd pretend I was smoking a cigarette, and I'd be like, Uh-huh. 
That was... And that's not on tape either. I'm that, sorry. Yeah, none of this stuff. But that, you know, and, and that's the thing. I mean, we do that with all of us. We were just, you know, we just do stuff, you know, and uh, that, that's the way it was the whole time. Thank yes. you. Yes, thank you. Thanks wonderful. for initiating those stories. You that bet. was great. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Hi. Um, just wondering how your experience was on the four next gen movies and the second one I thought of was there's a South Park episode where Cartman wants Mr. Worf to come while they're having the whole fun with Veal thing. Fun with Veal, yes. yes. Was that your voice or was it? No, no. They, they, um, in fact, I heard that they just wanted to do the, the Worf voice and so they made up this character and you know, or they put them in there but, but no, that wasn't my voice but I'm a big South Park fan and I, I saw that and I went Oh my God! You know, because I didn't know they were going to do that, and it was it was pretty hilarious. What was your first question? What? I was just curious how you, what your experience was working on the four next gen movies and what oh, you thought um, of your characters' role. And the the next gen movies were were a, were a departure from the TV show, which is very interesting. Uh, the first movie was basically to introduce us, so it it ran the gamut of what was going on. The second movie, of course, was a brilliant movie, which I loved. I thought it was perfect. Uh, the, uh, oh, the spacewalk scene. The, the board. Really cool. First yeah. contact. And then, um, then after that, the next one, uh, the next two were bizarre. <laughs> you know, they were, they were, you know, good movies, but they were bizarre. I mean, this one movie, um, the one where they come to the planet of blondes, Sorry. I like that movie. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people did, but it was a bizarre movie, you know, to come to a, a, a planet full of blondes. And didn't somebody say, you know, do, do you have any, like, Italian people around here at all? Or do you have any? And um, these people are so advanced that they could slow down time. But they were being bombed and... And they were just running around like, I mean, it was, it was like a bizarre. Yes, interesting. But there was a very, I'm sorry, were you, were you texting? Is that what you're doing? No, I was taking a picture. Oh. I'm a fan. I'm talking. So I'm sorry. You asked a question. Anyway, he, he doesn't get, he doesn't, he's not, he's like, yeah, I don't care. Um, <laughs> But, there was, but a very, there was a very interesting, uh, very funny thing that happened was the, the scene where all the people are going up the mountain and Patrick's leading everybody up the mountain. Come with us, you know, we'll lead you. And they're going up the mountain. <coughs> and there was a woman that had a bag of stuff, you know, because they took everything they could. You know, they don't have suitcases for some reason. They had burlap bags right. and stuff like that. Sacks, satchels. And she was carrying, along with all the other stuff, people, she was carrying a big wooden spoon. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm going, what? I'm looking and I'm, she's got a spoon. <laughs> I mean, what, is she going to run into some soup or something later? Right. You know? <laughs> uh, What's up with the spoon? Yeah, and so I told Jonathan that it was a whole I mean, we all were just in tears because we were laughing so hard. You know, like Patrick's like, everyone, bring your toys, bring your children, and your spoons. <laughs> Don't forget, you know, and I, I was, it was bizarre. It was one of those bizarre moments. And so Jonathan, for the, for the gifts that he gives the cast, right. he had these big wooden spoons oh made. Oh my for gosh, us. that's hilarious. And a little gold plaque that says, Care of the Baku, you know? And <laughs> it was just great. But it was, it, and those movies, I'm sorry, but First Contact was brilliant because it was just powerful. The Borg, and we're all doing that. Mm -hmm. And the other ones were bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, hi. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry, that's your. Um, so my, one of my favorite Worf moments for, for sheer comedy is uh, Worf in an alien bar in a space station singing Klingon opera with a four-armed piano player that just always cracked me up. Uh, my, but what my question was, there's a YouTube video out there that's basically 10 minutes of Worf's ideas getting shot down by various people. <laughs> was that ever an issue with you and the writers where you said, can you just listen to me just once? I mean, I know the episode would be only 10 minutes long, but listen to me just once. No, no, it never was an issue. 
never was an issue. Uh, there were a few times where I'd say, Captain, we should do this, and he said, no, Mr. Warp, and then it would turn out really bad, and I would go, see? <laughs> uh huh. But, but uh, it, it never was. I mean, but like I said, when I was talking about the other thing, the, um, the Dax thing, you don't realize it until somebody puts it together. And then all right. of a sudden you go, oh my God, you know, this, you know, and it's a funny video, I must admit, I, I loved it. Because they're all going, no, no, right. Mr. Warf, oh, Mr. Warf, shut up, you know. <laughs> Big but they used to call me off camera, um, Big Dumb Stupid Warf. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I thought it was funny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank we have you. time for one last question, so oh, let's go over here. Hi. Um, I just wanted to start with saying thank you so much for this morning. Um, you welcome. Was... Oh, you're the, you're the married yeah. lady. <laughs> to me, I, I got to tell you. All right, fill us in. Um, the guy, a guy came to, the, to, the, to my table yesterday. You, you'll know this. And he goes, <laughs> he goes look, uh, Mr. Dorn, I, I gotta, I'm going to bring my fiance or my, my lady I'm going to ask to marry me to this thing. Would you distract her? And then I'll get down on one knee and, uh. and during the photo ops. And I said, yeah, sure, that'd be great, da-da-da. And he was like, oh, I've been carrying around this ring. and I'll, No problem. <coughs> so that was yesterday. And so today he comes up and I'm sorry, I had forgotten. <laughs> I totally forgotten and the guy comes up and he looks at me he goes <laughs> and I went oh my god oh yeah oh uh, hey <laughs> I hear that you and turned around and I go you know I think this guy wants and she turns around and he's on one knee oh that's amazing was, yeah that was just fantastic and 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 the funny thing is, he was, he was, he was almost, he couldn't get anything out. <laughs> I, I kept going, ask her. Uh, ask her. You know what? That, that's two Star Trek proposals that we've yeah. had yeah. at Emerald City Comic Con. Yeah. so cool. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think they, and they got some great pictures too. So, <laughs> yeah, great. Congratulations. Yes, yes congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, but no I really just wanted to know what um, your favorite episode to shoot was, or your favorite episode overall. Uh, my favorite episode were, there were two that were, uh, that tied for my favorite. And one is the offspring where Data builds the child. Mm -hmm. And the other one, yeah, it was brilliant. And the other one was the drumhead, which was not, wasn't a, an exciting, you know, sort of shoot him up type, but it was a very, like a courtroom drama and uh, spectacular performances. And I, and, I, and I loved them both. I thought they were, I didn't have much to do. And well, the second one I did a little bit, but um, Patrick had some brilliant, if you, if you have a chance, you should go and look at them again. They were great. But, um, and interestingly enough, Jonathan Frakes directed both of those. Great director. So. Thank you. Congratulations again. Congratulations, and, baby. Uh, Michael, tell everyone where they can find you online. I'm sorry, what? Tell everyone where they can find you online. Your Twitter is at... <coughs> my, um, my Twitter... Now, please give me a break, because I haven't been verified yet. Let's get him verified. Uh, is a at AKA Wharf. Nice. And um, uh, that's, that's kind of it, you know. Um, yeah, I have my Facebook, which is just Michael Doran. Uh, but otherwise, that's, that's, that's how you can get in touch with me. But like I said, uh, if you'd love to see the new uh, a Wharf spinoff. I would. Yeah. Right? Twitter, Facebook. And thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Let's thank you give it up much. one more time for Michael Doran. <laughs>